Hi, I'm Cynthia Alvarado. I'm the Director of Operations and Strategic Planning for the Midtown Management District and the Founding Director of the Midtown Cultural Arts District. Welcome. Today I'd like to introduce you to Mr. Desmond Bertram Pitts. He is the Chair of the Midtown Management District Cultural Arts District and he is also the Secretary of the Board of Directors for the Midtown Management District as well as a member of the Texas Museum Association Board of Directors and the Museum of Fine Arts Board of Directors. Mr. Bertram Mintz, thank you. Thank you, Cynthia. All right, today we're gonna to talk with um, the feature artist, uh, Mr. James, uh, Mr. James Walker, with the uh, Midtown Wrap uh, for Juneteenth. Uh, so let's get into it. And this is a, a brief introduction, but I kind of want you to elaborate because I know there's more about the behind the man and the artist. Right, right. right. Uh, so James is a multi multidisciplinary artist and designer. Uh, as a Houston native that tours across the country, James said that this project aligns with his body of work and brand as Houston's tour guide ambassador. James is always eager to host newcomers who visit Houston and introduce them to the arts and design culture of the city. So get, tell us a little bit more about James the man, James the artist, like, who is this guy? All right, so I go by James, he walk in man in many hats, artist in many acts. I am Houston's tour guide ambassador, uh, also the Janet Tenn CEO. So I'm just a overall creative man that's just willing to go to above and beyond to manifest anything that comes to mind. Yeah, I love that. So. So I did a little research, a little okay. background prior to today, gotcha. and I see that you're in your, uh, you got some of your gear on, and right. the design rap, designer wrap. So tell me a little bit more about that brand, and what, what does that mean? Yeah, so basically, uh, designer rap tour is a combination of me uh, merging my art, my music, and my design all together. Uh, I'm really a designer that raps, and it's an art to so bring in each one of those disciplines together. And so, you know, a lot of times when people ask, well, which one would you choose? Or if you had to, you know, pick one, well, they all work together cohesively. I, w I would say my music is like the soundtrack for my artwork. Oh, I love that. So tell me about merging your music with your art. Like what made you want to t put those two passions together? So it's, a, it's really a lifestyle brand. It's something that I, I realize I've been doing all my life. I got. $10,000 in each one of those fields, but I didn't really have an a, a identity for it. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, the, the phrase came along within some lyrics that I wrote. And upon hearing those lyrics back after the fact, I realized it had a nice ring to it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, within the elevator pitch and a lot of times I'm trying to explain what it is that I do, that was those two words, or basically those three words, basically summarize everything that I was trying to say. Right, nice. and so, so you're a father. Um, and it's interesting to me, being a new father myself, mm -hmm. I think it's important to show up for them in okay. many different ways. And it's yeah. also at work, right. bringing them with you, bringing, bringing them along you know, for the journey. So tell me about the relationship with your son and how you have him a part of what you're doing? Uh, for those that know me, you know, usually when I introduce people to my son, I introduce him as my tour guide ambassador. <laughs> I mean, uh, not my tour guide, but my uh, tour manager, which is, uh, he's here today. He's actually on payroll, but I, for me, when my son- oh, he's on payroll. He's on payroll. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So I, I love that. You know, he almost got his pay doc, but I, I, I brought him back. <laughs> but. Um, Man, it's, it's simple. Uh, when my son was born, you know, I would say before I had kids, I almost was just at the verge. I thought I was just so immersed into my career that I, I wasn't going to have time to have kids yeah. or be focused. But when my son got here, I just made my son a part of my lifestyle. So I say in six months, he was already in the studio with me. And, you know, I'm doing client wow. meetings and I'm bringing them with me. And people, I just became known for having my son, I got kicked out of bars, I, you know, just whatever it takes. But uh, now at the age of five, we, I took him on the road with me, we started touring together. So getting him cultured at, at, at a young age as well. So it, it's, a, it's a lifestyle. 
So there's there's one post on Instagram, and we're gonna get into the piece, I promise y'all, just but it's a purpose for this. Um, there's a post on Instagram that I just found profound. Uh, it says, it's a picture of you and your son, and it says, I hope you're inspired. Truth is, I know how it feels to be denied, but I just kept at it, the thrill is in the ride. Man, where you find that at? <laughs> I, I told you I did my research. Hey man, yeah, I, I did write that, and uh, that's an image of me and my son on there. I think it was you and your son. Yeah, um, man, that, that's, that's some bars right there. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, if you don't mind, can you unpack that? Like, what, what is that? Read it to me again. So it says, I hope you're inspired. Truth is, I know how it feels to be denied. Right. But I just kept at it. The thrill is in the ride. Yeah, that, that sums up my journey. Um, I, I think I speak for the underdogs on a, on a, on a broad scale. Just I, I would like to be remembered as that person that you know, was resilient when it came to his contributions. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm 42 now, and I'm still like, I feel like my son is, is uh, reviving that inner child within me. And so people that, that see me, you know, whether you see me in grade school, high school, when they see me now, it's like, you're still doing what you was doing when you, uh, when you was uh, a, young, a younger uh, guy. And uh, a lot of people that I know have, you know, pretty much just given up on dreams, especially like when they have a kid and they see like, I ain't missed a beat and I'm steady, right. just continue to thrive. Not just survive, but thrive. And as a father, as a creator, so it's, it's no excuse, but for those that, that feel like, you know, nobody's listening and everybody's watching, you know, you put the work in, it'll, it'll pay off. Yeah. I feel that. So thanks for sharing that. Yeah. I'm sorry to put you on the spot. Nah, there, nah. I'm, when I'm, I see I'm, something like that, and, it's a spotlight. You know, yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so let's get into art. So how did that become a part of who you are? Like, how? What spoke to you about art, or when did you start? All right. So I real to be honest, I realized I was going to be an artist, or I at least had the potential because I seen success at a young age. Um, one of the biggest accomplishments at a young age, I won a district-wide Christmas card contest in, in fifth grade. And that Christmas card went out to all the elementary schools. That was like the first um, gig where I actually got paid for. I think they gave me like $100 and a bunch of goodies and snacks and might have been uh, some tickets to an event. but. Even, you know, I was quiet in, in elementary school, but I was still popular because everybody wanted me to draw something. And that's pretty much, you know, if it wasn't music, I was in the choir, I was in the drill team. Music and art has always been a lot. So, uh, and then from there, I just progressed in middle school. Um, I collected magazines. If you came in my room as a kid, you see I had collages all over my room. And then high school, I, my, my major was actually graphic design and printing. Okay. And so I kind of fell into, um, after high school, I kind of fell into the whole follow up, uh, make sure you got a backup plan. Mm -hmm. So I took that route, it did, I didn't last long. And uh, I just took about it. If I ever went back to school, it was gonna be for something I'm passionate about. Mm -hmm. So it was music first, then I went back to school for graphic design. but. Every, all in between, I always been self-taught. I just actually went back and cultivated the things that I had taught myself about. And that put me in position to have leverage and get independent contract work and work with organizations like Midtown. Perfect, so you turn your passion into a yep. career. Yep. I'm a big advocate for doing something that you love. For you. Like, I think it's really important to put all your effort and you might need to make some money here and there and along the way, but putting your putting your energy into making your passion part of your work. What what I realized is uh, I always win when I bet on myself. Yeah. So all of my all of my passion projects turn into money. I've never chased the money. I never really focus on money. I just continue to pour into myself. Even with graphic design and and, and graphic art, I was just guinea pig in myself and make it, put myself on the cover of this and cover of that. And the same with music, I started making my own beats. It's me cultivating myself, people see it and then they ask, 
well, who's doing this for you? And then they see that I can bring value to them as a creator. And then that's how I started getting paid. Yeah, thank, thank you for sharing that. Mm-hmm. Now y'all see the purpose of me bringing all of this to, to light before we get to the work? Uh, so, dear grandma, tell, tell us about, you know, I, I think you were, gave, you were given the road to freedom as right. theme. So right. how did you take that and get to dear grandma? Okay, so, uh, being from the South, I've always been familiar with Juneteenth. Uh, but it was always told from different perspectives of like what actually would happen, you know. And um, a few people sent me this um, request for artists to submit, mm-hmm. and I really just pondered on am I even the right guy to contribute something? Because I, I hadn't identified what voice I would tell the story in. Mm-hmm. So what I did was I challenged myself to, even though I knew what Juneteenth was about, I challenged myself to go back and start relearning as if I didn't know anything. And that sent me down a rabbit hole of just research and development. And I came across the story of Miss Opal Lee, Mm -hmm. which spearheaded the Freedom Walk that led to Juneteenth becoming a uh, national holiday. So... I hadn't really uh, committed to that story just yet, mm-hmm. but it was, that's why it, it benefits me to have somebody like my son around because I was telling him the story because I was like, how can I, uh, how can I simplify this story and enlighten somebody, but almost as if like I'm talking to mm-hmm. a child. And so I was kind of practicing with my son, and I was telling him about it. I asked him, did he know about Juneteenth? Of course, they don't teach him that in school. So uh, I started telling him the story about it. And he's like, well, what does she look like? Oh, uh, I want to I wanna see what she looked like. And I kind of pondered for him. I said, she actually looks like your grandmother, oh, which wow. my, uh, my last grandparent, my paternal grandmother, passed in the same year, 2021. And when I shared the story with him, that's when the light bulb came on. And I was like, ah, I can tell it from the perspective of Miss Opal Lee's story, being that she spearheaded. And so that's when I committed to uh, making it uh, almost like, you know, I was, I was kind of like, I was interested to like, man, I want to meet Miss Opal Lee. So like, what would I say to her? So I kind of framed it as if I was writing her a letter. Mm-hmm because she is known as the, uh, the grandmother of Juneteenth. So that's what posed the titles, especially with, with music, titles are important. Mm-hmm. So when I name my pieces, I always consider, you know, strategically what I'm going to name it. Yeah. So that is really powerful. Mm-hmm. And I think it was, it was very purposeful for me to ask about how your son influences your work. Right. Because that's what you just told us. Right. That's, that's really powerful. That connection that you have with mm-hmm. him to create a piece that could speak to right. thousands. And, and, and that conversation with him spearheaded the concept. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, tell us a little bit more. What was through color palette? Like, how do you choose the colors? Um, I don't know if you want to walk through. Maybe we can go from letter to letter. Yeah. Um, so let's, let's start with with the M, um, as a designer, you know, color psychology is something that I studied. Uh, it makes a difference in my work, just learning the, the impact that colors can have. Mm-hmm. And so um, I knew I can create some visually appealing, but when, when you have a story that I always drives it home deeper. Yeah. So of course the red represent the bloodshed and the sacrifice the gold represents uh, resilience and uh, enlightenment. The green, you know, represents growth. The brown, endurance, and then it, it repeats. So I knew I had seven letters, so I wanted to balance it out, and I made the middle piece brown to kind of bridge the gap. Um, this style that I use is actually a style that I've become uh, best known for. I, I call it abstrometrics which it's, a, uh, it's a, a series of patterns 
of geometric shapes and linear lines that over time is something that I've learned to hone and I, it, is I almost do it in my sleep. It's just- So uh, you use the math that we learned in high school, you actually use that? Yeah, in, pretty or, much. Okay, so I've never heard anybody <laughs> actually use any of that. Okay, it's good to know that it is useful. Okay. I didn't know that. I didn't know that math make you creative, and, you know. Yeah. So I, 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 I wasn't the best math student, but when somebody tricked me into thinking that, I, I so bumped up my math grade. So yeah, yeah. I, I must be calculated in some kind of way. <laughs> so uh, yeah, this style is called. I, I coined it as abstrametrics, and it's geometric and abstract shapes that, you know, uh, overlaid over, over. Uh, photographs and different images and graphic elements. It uh, kind of evokes like, almost like a tribal, uh, unorthodox tribal visual language mm -hmm. in a sense. Yeah. Yeah. So to an untrained or an eye that it really just doesn't see art that often, or you know, a little black boy who doesn't get the opportunity to see and visualize things of this nature. What type of feeling or emotion are you trying to get from this? Oh, and okay. I know that people get different types of names, but what are you speaking to in, in this? What would you like people to see? Um, I'd like to first, uh, I always try to aim to make some visual appealing to where it, it at least intrigues somebody but leave some type of breadcrumbs that, that poses a question. So without trying to preach, at least make it to where they are inquisitive. So like for somebody to say, well, what, what does the numbers represent? Mm -hmm. And then when they, you know, you realize it's years, oh, okay, so now we gotta go deeper. What does those years represent? And then it continues to unpack the, the different stories. Yeah. Uh, if you can make something gradually, graphically and visually appealing, and uh, leave for just enough for people to ask. And then uh, I like people to, to walk away in light. Yeah. And, and, and want to do more research. Uh, just going back to hip hop, uh, one of my, my influences, I would say Tupac. Tupac used to send me to the dictionary, but like in a cool way. You know, he would say certain things that was, I didn't know the meaning, but it sounded so cool. So it's like, I got to go look this up. So he made it cool to want to, you know, still have that edge, but be uh, proud to be knowledgeable yeah. about things. Yeah. yeah. So is there anything else that you want to share or give insight to about this piece, about this story? Oh, uh, starting with the portrait, I think with, with me having only one portrait, I, I strategically, uh, I didn't want to have too many images to where it, it kind of looked like a collage of a lot of people and then mm -hmm. people kind of get confused and they think it's the typical Juneteenth, you know, so many people that have to go back and research. Uh, having that one portrait to kick off with the letter M, I like people to, to pose a question to ask, well, who is this? And so I included her name to, challenge people to go and research and find out who she is and her contributions and, and to realize that she's somebody that's actually still alive. You know, she's here with us to have a conversation with us and um, at the end of it to just serve as a reminder that we broke those chains. And um, my, what I would like them to take away is the fact that we've come so far, but it's important that we not become complacent and we continue to pick up that torch and carry, uh, pick up where our, our, our elders and our ancestors left off. Absolutely. Yeah, um, I think that's, that's it for us. Um, I appreciate you sharing your experience, your background, uh, sharing your son with us. I'm just I'm a huge believer in you know, the power of black fathers. Right, right. Um, and what you're it. doing for him and for the community at large, um, through your art, through your music, it's just amazing and powerful. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. So are there any questions for James from the audience about his background, his art, this piece?
We want everybody to speak at once. Welcome we aboard. Do, we do have questions in the back. How long did it take you to create it? Uh, it took me longer to come up with the concept than to actually physically create it. Uh, I think I'm, at this point in my career, I tend, to, uh, I tend to do well under pressure. So I knew I could create something visually appealing. I just didn't want to start on the project without having a strong story, almost to the point to where I was willing to not even submit if I didn't have a strong enough story. So I, pro you know, I do a lot of my thinking in my car. I, I ride around and uh, I probably rode around about two weeks just formulating and listening to uh, videos and listening to Miss Opal Lee speak. And uh, so by two weeks total, but the actual rendering of the design, it got to the point where I was down to like three days. And I had, and, and I, I didn't even have, I knew I wanted to, uh, I knew I wanted to illustrate the image of her because in my concept that I submitted, it was, uh, it was just an image, uh, but I didn't own the rights to that photo, so I knew I was gonna have to illustrate it, but I was like, if I can just get this concept, the story over, then I have a good chance, and, and of course they selected it, and then I had to get to work. But I, I do this in my sleep, so probably after I, I, I realized I won, uh, probably like another three days. Yes, sir. You got a white letter? You actually answered the question, which was your process. Oh, okay. It's, uh, it's, it's quite unorthodox. <laughs> so I know your artwork has only been up for a few days. Yes, ma'am. But what has the impact been? Because it just went up on uh, Monday or Tuesday. Yeah, Monday. What's been the impact so far that you've seen from friends and family? Um, you know, I, I like sometimes kind of just absorbing like sitting in the middle of it and and walking past people and acting as if i'm i'm just a spectator as mm -hmm. well but then I, once i kind of feel the vibe then i'll let people know hey you like what you know what you think and it's like oh this is my artwork you know uh i ran across uh, this was the day right after the inst installation i ran across a guy that he paused and he was looking at it. And so it made me kind of walk up because I was getting ready to cross the street anyway. And I was like, what you think? And it started off kind of like a negative connotation because he was like, man, what these people, man, these people don't know, they, they just doing this and doing that. And rather than getting defensive, I just, I, I heard him out. And his, his perspective was more so like, uh, people getting all happy about this national holiday just because it's something somebody gave us and they don't even know what they're celebrating. And so I say, oh, well, he was saying all this. He still didn't know I was the artist. I say, well, this is my artwork. And so uh, I say, well, do you know who the portrait of the lady uh, in the image is? And he said, no, and I broke down the story and this whole attitude changed, he was like, oh, well dang, oh, I didn't know she was the one that created this whole walk. He thought it was something that, you know, some outsiders that was pretty much just, mm -hmm. uh, what's the word, uh, exploiting us. Mm -hmm. And so um, he was like, he said, man, I got to pass by here every day, coming back and forth to work. And now, now man, you just taught me something, you know, because he was, he was like, I don't know what people in, in New York and California said, this is a Texas thing. And I changed his whole perspective just from breaking down the story in five minutes. Wow. Yeah. Um, Good question. No, I think, I think what helped me, because I'm used to like breaking up, I'm, Type argue is another, typography is another one of my strengths. So I'm, I'm used to like working within individual um, compositions anyway. Uh, it actually, I think was more helpful is 
It actually helped me out because when I first uh, was thinking about the mirror, I thought I had to make it expand. I thought I had to do like one complete image. And so when I got that template, I was like, oh, this actually helps my process to where I can approach it like individual letters. So yeah, that's a good question. It, it actually helped me out. Any other questions? Two. Welcome sure. to the tour. <laughs> <laughs> I love that sign off. Yeah. Thank you guys for joining us today. Um, and until next time.